welcome to this lesson, Hard Work Peace. Remember in our last class we discussed about presidential and parliamentary system of government. Today's lesson is going to be on monarchy. Now the objectives for this lesson are, you should be able to know the meaning of monarchy, the characteristics of monarchy, forms of monarchy, advantages and disadvantages of monarchy. What is monarchy? Monarchy may be defined as a type of government by one individual. This individual may be a king, queen, or emperor known as the monarch. It is also a type of government headed by one person known as the king, queen, or emperor. Now, we have um, the characteristics of monarchy. However, it should be noted that hereditary monarchy is a normal type, but elective forms do exist also. The essence of monarchy is the personification of the majesty and sovereignty of the state in an individual. So let us see the characteristics of monarchy. We have various characteristics here. And here we have ownership of government. Now, in a monarchy, the government of the country is in the hands of a king, emperor, or the queen. Another characteristic here is age-long form of government. Can you see it? Now, monarchy is an age-long form of government and hereditary in nature. Now, we also have another characteristic here, checks and balances. In some forms of monarchy, like in the constitutional monarchy, the ruler is under check by the constitution. Now, this helps to prevent dictatorship. Another one here is hereditary. Now, it is a type of government that is based on hereditary pattern. It can be transferred from one generation to another. Are we together, students? Now, the next we have is natural institution. Now, monarchy is a natural institution in the sense that obedience to the king is seen as obedience to God. The people see their king as a god. Do you understand? Next, we have a stable political system. Monarchy can bring about a stable political system. So let's see the various forms of monarchy. We have two forms of monarchy, and they are constitutional monarchy and absolute monarchy. Let us talk about the constitutional monarchy. When we say constitutional monarchy, this is where um, power is regulated by the constitution. In this type of monarchy, the, power, the uh, monarch can promulgate only those, only those laws which are agreed to by the elected parliament. Also, he or she is bound to respect not only the letters of the constitution, but also the laws of the state. Now, Britain is a good example of a constitutional monarchy. Now, in this type of monarchy, the power of the king or the monarch is regulated by the constitution. Next, we have is absolute monarchy. This occur when there is no established constitutional authority to check the king's power. The king rules as the head of government and head of state in this type of monarchy. Do you understand? Let us see the advantages of monarchy. Unity and orderliness is what we have here. Now, both are necessary to every stable political system and can best be secured only where supreme authority is vested in a single ruler. Harmonization is another advantage. When we talk about harmonization, this helps to harmonize different interests and prevent so social strife among the people. We have monarchy as a natural institution, which is another advantage here. Now, obedience to a king is seen as obedience to God in a monarchy. 
Obedience to a king is as natural as the obedience of a child to its parents. The state is but an extension of the family, the king being the father and the people his children. So we also have protector as an advantage. The monarchy is the protector. In some circumstances, the king may serve as the protector of the people at large from the tyranny of the few. We have historical and practical reasons. Now, where a hereditary kingship has been in existence for a considerable time, it is unwise and unnecessary to abolish it. Democratic elements can be incorporated into the system. So we, can also, we can also practice monarchy for historical reasons. Let us see the disadvantages or the merit of monarchy. The first here we have is bad ruler. Good intentions, ability, industry are not hereditary, so a monarch could be a bad ruler. Next year we have is despotism. A monarch could be despotic to keep the people weak so that they may be unable to resist him. Now we have come to the end of this lesson. Until next time and bye.